Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Pretty nice day out there in Kelowna, hey? Absolutely. <laughs> we live in a beautiful part of the world for sure. Awesome. Okay, so let me get to introducing our next presenter, Mona. So mm -hmm. Mona Nybergel is from Stepping Stones. Homo, 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 I had that before, Mona. Homo homo homo. Yeah. Why am I struggling? I was, doing, I was doing well before. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be talking to you today about how is your body speaking to you? How can you release the disease, the this, this ease with homeopathy? She has been studying homeopathy since 2002 and has been in practice since 20, uh, 2010. She took her training at the Lumi, Luminos School of Homeopathy in Vancouver from 2004 to 2008 and received her homeopathic master clinician diploma. She also has uh, diplomas from the uh, Devonshire School of England for anatomy and physio physiology and pathology and disease. Yes. She is registered with the Canadian Society of Homeo Homeopaths and the BC Association of Homeopaths. Past training in touch for health and body management courses, nutrition courses, ear candling, Australian bush flower essences, uh, training in orthobiomony courses. Orthobiomony. Uh, orthobiomony. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm trying to do well. Uh, she will be a, a lifetime student of human psychology, finding the root cause of disease from the understanding and practice of homeopathy. Health to her comes from a balance of mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual wholeness, which is what home homeopathy addresses. She currently has a full-time practice in Kelowna, BC. And she's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, I will turn it over to you. And if you have any questions or comments for Mona, please type them in the, in the uh, Facebook uh, feed here and I will pass them along to Mona. And you'll pass them on. Okay, can you yeah. just allow me to screen share? I'll talk for a few minutes and then I'm gonna do a PowerPoint as well. Yeah, screen share away. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Shauna, for that fabulous introduction. And um, I, I just wanna talk a little bit about myself. So I, I knew from a very young age that I was to be of service to people. Um, in elementary school, I would counsel people and they, um, they nicked me, named me uh, Counselor Casey, actually, back in the day. So I always knew that I wanted to help people and it's been a really beautiful journey. Uh, when I was 19, um, I started to have issues with my gallbladder, I started to have gallbladder attacks, and that kind of got me into the world of health and healing. And so I decided that uh, I would go and see a naturopath and that I would go down the natural road because they wanted me to, um, the doctors wanted to take my gallbladder out. And I wasn't uh, really interested in doing that at 19 years old. So this started my whole, um, my whole life work into health and healing and how to help myself and how to help others and how to find other ways to heal. Um, and in the 1990s, I started to take touch for health courses and started to really delve into nutrition and started to have more of an understanding of how our body works. But, you know, when I was working on people, I noticed that um, there was a lot of repeat patterns that were happening. I would help people, but then they would come back in three weeks with the same issue. It might be a little bit better, might be a little worse, might have gone to the other side of the body. And I, I started to get really frustrated because I felt like just doing body work wasn't enough, that there had to be something uh, bigger. There was more of a dimensionality to it. There was more something deeper that I wasn't reaching. So in 2002, uh, my girlfriend at the time, who was very much into health and healing as well, um, invited me to come to a natural first aid course with her. And at this natural first aid course, I heard about homeopathy for the first time in my life. I couldn't believe that I had done all these years of different healing modalities, and I had never heard of homeopathy before. All the bells and whistles went off in my head because I understood that this was the answer I was looking for. This addressed the mental, the emotional, the physical, and the spiritual. So we had all of those dimensions being answered. So it was, it was talking about root cause, and that's something that I wanted to get into and talk a little bit more. It was about um, looking at things in a more deeper way and actually finding it. 
So um, I just want to share with you, hopefully you can see this. I don't know if everyone can see this or not. Shauna, can they see this? I'm not sure. Oh, hang on. I can't see it yet. Yeah, I'm sure okay. you put the screen. Yeah, you should be able to share it. Uh, share, hang on. Sorry, everybody. I thought <laughs> I had this figured out. Hey, it's tech. It's always a bit of a challenge. It's tech <laughs> and it just drives me. Okay, it says share screen. Okay, here we go. There it is, I think, share. Ah, there you go. There we go. Everybody can see that? I can see it, yeah. That's okay, good. thanks, Shauna. Thank you for your help. Okay, so releasing your dis-ease with homeopathy and how is your body speaking to you? So when people come to see me, it's always usually, usually always about a physical ailment. And then I'm asking them, what is your body trying to say? What is your physical body actually saying to you on that deeper level? So every ailment or illness has a causation, whether it is obvious or not. It can be a physical cause, an emotional or a mental cause. For many people, they end up in an unconscious replaying of a past event or a situation in order to repair or recreate the outcome. Unfortunately, unless an ailment is released on every level or dimension, because we are multi-level humans, our physical bodies hold the memory of whatever has happened to us. Okay, so if you have a certain place in your body, which is your signal that something is off balance, that will always be your weakness in your physical body. So a lot of times when people get sick, they'll say to me, oh, I, I know I'm coming down with something because my throat hurts right away. Just something is off in my throat and I don't feel well, but it always starts in my throat. So I'll know that that's, an, that's a place that's their weak spot for them that's their body speaking to them that ah oh, things are off balance so we need to go back and um, address old issues that are not healed so when something happens acutely like you smash your fingers in a car door ouch or you get stung by a bee all the information is speaking very loudly with pain receptors and immediate reactions you swell you get red hot, irritated when you get uh, stung by a bee or a wasp. The causation is very clear and that's easy to remove because it's a very acute thing. It's just happened to you. For chronic old issues that have been present for longer than six weeks, and believe me, if it's been over six weeks, it's a chronic issue. That means that it's an ongoing thing that your body doesn't know how to deal with and it doesn't know and it doesn't have the information that it needs to heal. We need to look at the bigger picture to see things from a different perspective. So I call it the iceberg picture. What you see on the surface does not tell the story of what is happening inside or the past of what has happened to you. This is healing that peels back the layers until the mental, emotional and physical parts of you are whole again. This requires time patience and understanding. You don't heal in a day from a chronic issue and you don't heal in a week from a chronic issue, but that doesn't mean that you can't start to feel better and you can't start to see relief. We are not suppressing symptoms and that is very common in the modern drug world. We are asking the body via your immune system to go back and fully heal that issue. So that is wiped away from your mind and body completely. A lot of times when I do a follow-up with people, I will ask them, how is this and this and this? And a lot of times they won't even remember the first issue they came for. I'll ask them, you know, let's say they came for migraines. How, how many migraines have you had since I've seen you last? They're like, oh, uh, oh, I haven't even thought about that. Um, I haven't had any migraines. You'll know that their immune system has gone back. Their mental and emotional place has been released with the remedy. 
and now their bodies are actually going back and healing that physical issue. This is something that needs to be understood on a deeper level. Unless something is gone from the mind, it can never be healed from the physical body level. It just keeps returning in a different way, in a different form. You can't erase something from the body, even by physically having an operation and think that the problem is solved. People have ghost pains when they get their legs cut off. So mentally and emotionally, if things haven't been dealt with, you will still have the physical issues going along with your mental and emotional issues. And not everybody is aware of that, but that's my job as a homeopath. And together we can figure that out. That's part of the journey. Okay. So your mind mentally and emotionally has to be healed of issues as well for a true depth of healing. We want to be whole as human beings. I think the reason we struggle and get stressed out is when things happen to us and around us, we are affected in a physical way. That is usually what we notice first, a physical reaction to an emotional situation. So for example, you know, if you get really stressed out, sometimes people will say, oh, my stomach hurts. I couldn't possibly eat anything. I feel nauseous. So they're having a physical response to emotional situation. And that is very, very common. You generally don't have one without the other. When things happen to us in our lives, we become imbalanced in some way and things don't feel aligned. We feel out of sorts for everyone because we are individuals. That can mean many different scenarios of what disease looks like overall. And that's the one thing I love so much about homeopathy. It takes into account who you are as an individual. So I really love this. The first lady is crying that you see in this picture, upset. To me, she looks like a plant. Somebody that's not handling her emotions well is being affected very much by the world around her. The second lady's face, same lady, but she looks more stoic, like she's in survival mode, like, like fight or flight. So she looks like she can handle the world and maybe she might take a bite out of you. Kind of looks a little bit different from the first picture. The third picture is a is the picture of maybe somebody that's a mineral. They're more stable. They're a little more stoic, a little more rigid. They're not so emotional about the things that have happened to them. These are some of the remedies that I use daily in my practice. I look at people as a whole. Is that person a plant? Are they an animal? Are they a mineral? These are some very important questions. Do they have a really lot of old hurt wounds and being affected by what other people have done? For me, that would be more of a plant person. So the remedies that I look for are vibrational energy. And I mean, this is amazing because Samuel Hahnemann 230 years ago knew he didn't know what he was getting into but he was just looking for a better way to help people to heal because of the uh, medicine of the day was just so barbaric he didn't realize that he was creating the highest form of vibrational energy medicine known to man and it still is today and we still use the same remedies albeit we use thousands more than what samuel hahnemann had time to um, create and prove in his lifetime but we use these um, same remedies every day that Samuel Hahnemann founded over 230 years ago. So vibrational energy is energy. Doesn't matter how long or how far. And um, it's just, it can help people in a deeply profound way. So I wanna talk about a case. I know people really love hearing about cases. They always find it really fascinating, the work that I do. So. Of course, no names or anything are being used. So this could be virtually anybody. But I saw this young 19 year old male that was experiencing headaches, insomnia, vomiting. When he went outside of his comfort zone, he had huge anxiety and dizziness. He just wanted to stay in the house, couldn't go to work. And um, so his mother called me and uh, I came over to have a visit with him. It was easier to come to his home than to try and get him to come to my office because of the situation he was in. 
So when I was consulting with them, I found out that th this young man had, had experienced a car accident months before I met with him. It wasn't even that serious of a car accident. But after speaking with him, I realized this was his second head concussion that he experienced within a few years. He also played hockey and uh, he had had a concussion and his anxiety had started around that time. He was experiencing massive anticipatory anxiety, just thinking about going out with his friends and hanging out, which you'd think would be a really great, exciting thing for him. It usually would end up with him vomiting. He couldn't even go to work after this. He would carry an actual bucket around with him because he was so worried that he was going to be vomiting. He used to be a very, <clears throat> excuse me, he used to be a very social um, person as well. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. He had a girlfriend. He had a good job. And now his life was on hold. So I really felt like he needed a remedy for the shock that he had encountered um, with the car accident and also with the concussion. So I gave him aconite, which is a very common shock remedy, but I gave it to him in a pretty high dosage because I really needed to affect that mental and emotional place to help his physical body. He actually only took that remedy twice. The dizziness got better. The headaches came only once every two days instead of every day. He didn't experience any more vomiting. He felt like he was going to, but he actually never did get sick again. His anxiety lessened quite considerably. He started to sleep better. Everything just started to lessen and improve. After a second follow-up, three months later, he didn't have any more anxiety attacks or vomiting. He went back to work full time passed his end test for driving, and he didn't need to repeat the remedy again. His body just kept peeling back the layers because the energy and the force of the uh, vibrational energy was still there in him. It's not like a medication that he had to keep repeating over and over again. He went back to his regular, regular life, which was awesome. I was so happy to be able to help him. So that was fabulous. My next case I want to talk about was about a 76 year old woman. Her main complaint that she came to me was she was in a grief state from dealing with the death of her daughter. The truth of this story is all the issues that were actually present for many years became very difficult to ignore or deal with after the trauma of losing her loved one. So she had a lot of underlying emotional and mental issues going on. But the grief state that she felt after her daughter died brought out all the other unhealed parts of this woman back to the surface. And that's what happens a lot. People think that something happens suddenly, but there's actually a lot of unresolved things that are going on for people that when something happens again, it brings it all back up. So all of those unhealed wounds and parts of ourselves that we've been dealing with for a long time show up again. And people think that it's new, but it's actually most of the time very old issues. So this lady had been struggling with depression, heart issues, weight issues, insomnia for many years. They all started in childhood and none of the issues had been addressed at all on that mental and emotional place where they first started. Um, she also had hiatus hernia, diverticulitis, polyps, menstrual problems, like there was a long list. This lady was in her 70s. I first had to address the initial grief that I saw with her. And eventually we got to peel back the layers of the childhood issues that were the root cause and the beginning of the physical ailments. It does take time, but the payoff is actually living a life free from dealing with daily issues that stop us from having a quality of life. When you are in constant pain from anything, your quality of life is just to make it through the day. It's a hard way to live a good life. I'm happy to say this lady has done so well. I have supported her and helped her through many of these old, old issues. 
And she's very grateful because she's enjoying her life again, very fully compared to what she was before. She's sleeping, you know, old issues are not showing up again. She's happy. She's, she's really living a quality of life, which is a wonderful thing to have. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, where are we? Sorry, I'm missing something here. Oh, so this woman that I uh, saw had um, been diagnosed with Lyme disease. She was a woman in her 40s, and she'd been suffering for over 10 years with her symptoms. She tested negative, but had all the symptoms for Lyme, and her job was. Um, spent outside that's where she worked so Lyme disease was a very uh, good possibility for her because she did work outside um, some of her symptoms were her memory was very affected slept all the time but still felt very lethargic the soles of her feet felt like she was always walking on marbles sore and on fire very hot she had day and night sweats tips of her fingers were tingling and had a lot of numbness her joints were constantly sore and painful. She never had a day that she could remember not being in pain for the last 10 years. Her lymph nodes um, were swollen and sore just about every day. And the pain was constantly moving and changing all of the time. She said she was trying to figure out a way to be strong. She said, this disease is killing me. I feel like the walking dead. By the time she took her second dose of the remedy, it took her five days before she realized that she wasn't having any pain at all. She was so used to being in pain mode, it took her that long to actually have the realization. She was sleeping better, feeling good, and she was functioning on a normal level. She was overjoyed and couldn't believe that she could feel normal and not be in pain all the time again. To her, it was a miracle. To me, it was what homeopathy can do and what I've seen from using remedies with people. The big issue that affected her life, she saw people doing things that they shouldn't have been doing at work and she reported them to the authorities. And, it, and for that, she ended up losing her job and her livelihood over this situation. She was a whistleblower and we actually have a remedy that we think of when people are whistleblowers. She did the right thing, but she was treated unfairly. This was the start of her stress and it continued until it was addressed to release that mental and emotional part of herself. It was quite an amazing case and I'm very happy that she came to see me actually. So when you have the correct remedy to address the underlying problem, the body will release and heal the issue. Everything that happens in your physical body is being held in your mental and emotional world. And I know a lot of people have a problem with that because they don't see the correlation. But what has occurred in the past gets stored as pain or illness, dis-ease in the physical body. This is our stress. Whether it is brand new or old, our physical body responds with signals. We cannot heal what we don't address. That mental and emotional issues have to be addressed to allow the physical body to heal. That is the beauty of homeopathy. Everything can be addressed without question. Homeopathy releases in a gentle yet powerful way. What is your stress? This is the story of your life. And it's an individual process for everyone. So there is not a one size fits all remedy. There is not a, oh, just because I took this means it's going to work for my friend because their circumstances and their pain and their reason for being sick or having an illness or whatever it might be is not going to be the exact same as yours. I see cases that are closely similar, but there's always very individual things that make it theirs. And that's why I love homeopathy as well, because it's very individualized. We look at things on a one-to-one -one basis. We don't just say, hey, this is a one size fits all and you can take this and you'll be good. It is very individual. So these are common issues I see very often in my practice, insomnia 
And I'm not going to read all of these, you know, as um, what the underlying thing, but I thought insomnia is really an interesting one because I see this a lot. Deep fear of letting go and not trusting the process of life. A lot of times when I see people with insomnia, they, it can have lasted a long, long for them. So I think this was a very important thing um, to, to be aware of that mental and emotional aspect of things underneath. Depression, anxiety, feelings of worthlessness, low or no energy, no libido, no sex drive, high blood pressure. So high blood pressure is interesting. I see this a lot too. They suppress their negative emotions with people for fear of hurting them. So it's like they're doing it to themselves. They've shut themselves down. And so their blood pressure rises, which is really interesting. I see a lot of men menstrual and menopausal issues, prostrate, um, male impotence issues, vertigo, and interesting for vertigo, it feels unsafe. They are overwhelmed, mental confusion due to the outside pressure of the world. I see heart issues, head pain, migraines, tendonitis, arthritis, and arthritis I thought was very interesting. There's a lot of anger people around not carrying their load, they can feel unloved with a resulting resentful bitterness and judgmentalness. So a lot of times, you know, people think that this is just a physical thing, but it's not. I see a lot of grief. Uh, I see a lot of thyroid issues, Crohn's colitis, irritable, irritable bowel syndrome, virus, fungal issues, shingles, herpes, I mean, people always ask me, what can you do? What can you help? Um, anything really, because I'm dealing with you as the individual. This is your journey. This is me supporting you. So the list is endless. Who you are as a human being is very important to me. And, um, you know, what, what happened to you? What makes you tick? What, what is your stress? You know, those are, those are really important things that I need to know to be able to help you. So 50 years later, this is a really good one, healing my own surgeries and trauma. So approximately three years ago, I got the same pain in my ear, my left ear that I had as a child. I, I recognized it very well um, because ear pain is a very horrible pain and it really hurts a lot because it's, you know, head pain. Um, now my ear pain is a history dating back over 50 years. I had multiple ear infections and high fevers in my childhood until it was discovered that my left ear, and they're not sure why, but the hammer, anvil, and stirrup that transmits sound were disintegrated. And they don't know if it was because of the high fevers or if it was um, something that I was born with. So I had multiple surgeries as a child and lots of antibiotics. So after taking remedies for many years, I was healthy enough that my body went back 50 years. I know that's really hard to believe to heal my old surgeries, my ear infections, and to get rid of all the antibiotics. I could actually smell infection. I know that sounds disgusting, but I could smell it coming out of my ear. I didn't have an infection because there's nothing really in that ear except for a little thumbtack thing that transmits sound from my left ear. It was fascinating and it was a little gross, I must admit, to be a witness to what my body could do and heal. My body purged old stuff out of both ears. Even my right ear was affected. My ears would plug up, stuff would come out of them like it was just incredible what my body wanted to go back and do. But it was a natural process and I just allowed it. I only took remedies for a few days just to help with the pain. And after the pain was gone, I just let the body do its natural process of healing is what it needed to do. My body just wanted to do that. So your body is designed to heal everything. And when you have healed everything else, your body will continue to come back, come and heal back those layers of the old wounds and injuries until there is nothing left to address. So I just had to share that because people always ask me, what can your body heal? It wants to go back and heal everything, even 50, from 50 years ago. 
So this really um, cool guy came in to see me, 72 years old, bronchitis for two years he had had, took antibiotics, did natural remedies. He was retired, living a very good life, very fit and active. He looked like amazing. He only he looked 60 years old. When I asked him about his life, we talked about his childhood. It became very clear that he had a very old wound that needed to be addressed. He was born uh, during World War II. And because his mother wasn't married, she left him at an orphanage that, and he was considered a bastard. They phoned his grandparents to come and get him. His grandparents picked him up, but they treated him poorly and didn't show him much love. He got pneumonia at one years old and almost died. Now, all of these years later, he had a lung issue again, and the lungs are a lot about unresolved grief and depression. I looked for a remedy that would address the bronchitis in the lungs and his old wound of not being loved as a child and left in that orphanage. It was a deep case with a beautiful ending. I gave him a plant remedy. And within a few weeks, his bronchitis disappeared completely and he felt like his old self again. Even the pain in his left arm he'd had for many years from manual labor disappeared as well. So he was uh, quite relieved when, when all of that happened, but I had to look at the root cause of that deeper issue that was going on. And that was um, a part of looking at him as a whole human being and not just one little piece of him. So that was really important. <clears throat> So this is another case, um, a 13 year old girl. She had a fear of going to sleep and an unexplained anxiety. So I think this is just a really cool story to share because I don't get to see this all the time. So this young lady came with stomach complaints but there was no diagnosis. The doctors couldn't find anything wrong with her. She worried about the family a lot and she seemed like a very normal um, girl, you know, um, going into high school. She had some anticipatory anxiety for sure, but she had a real sleep issue and a real fear of the dark. And until maybe six months before, she had been sleeping with her parents most nights. Mom said that she was a very anxious child, even as a baby. When I took down the information, I asked the mom about the pregnancy, and this is what she told me. She said that she had been attacked by two large dogs when, she, when the mom was pregnant. And she was so afraid that they would kill her that she had to be admitted to the hospital. So she was carrying this child at the time that this happened. Now the dogs were very loving and friendly, but in her mind, when they knocked her over in her yard, she thought that she was gonna be killed. So she went into a very fearful anxiety state. When I realized that her daughter needed a remedy for the fearful state that the mom was in, that when she was carrying her, it made a pretty easy fit overall. And I gave her a high dose of a remedy for this issue that she had. And shortly thereafter, the daughter actually started to sleep properly. And she started to uh, be able to feel better. Her stomach aches disappeared. She felt quite good again. And the underlying root cause was addressed and released. It was a great case. I think she only took three doses of the actual remedy that she needed for um, at that time. It was, it was quite a wonderful case to be a part of here. I'm not sure how much time I have left, Shauna. Um, you have until 11.20, so just a couple more minutes. Oh, a couple more minutes, okay. So, uh, you know, this has just been awesome. I mean, I don't know if this explains everything that, you know, I just, I love talking about cases because people find it fascinating people from all different walks of life and what's happened to them. It's just a really great thing to um, be a part of. So I offer a mini, a free mini consult to give you more information for you or your loved ones. And I also um, do animal cases as well. I've been quite successful treating animals for anything from anxiety to um, emotional mental issues. Um, yeah, so it's been really great to do that as well. So I really look forward to um, talking with anyone if they're interested in knowing more information about homeopathy 
or how it can help you or root cause or any of those things. I love what I do and I love to be able to help people. So it's, um, it's been an honor to be able to be here and actually talk about this today. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Hey, Shauna. Hey, how are you doing? That's <laughs> great. I actually got done a little earlier than what I anticipated. <laughs> so it might leave you a few more minutes for somebody else. I don't know if there was anybody asking any questions on Facebook. I could there, there was comments they put in there. Like uh, Trisha said, hi, Mona, and then great information. So true, Lo love homeopathy. So great. there was comments coming through, no, no questions, but, but lots okay. of great information for sure. Oh, awesome. I'm so glad. I'm so glad to be able to do this. And thank you very much for having me here today. Yeah, it was should awesome. We, should we bring Barbara in? We should bring Barbara in. We should bring Let's Barbara in. Let's get Barbara in. Okay, here she's coming. She's coming in. She's coming in to join us. Hey, Barbara. Ooh, good morning. <laughs> I know you two know each other. We do. Yes, very well. Very much so. Shared an office together. You look beautiful, Barbara. Oh, well, thank you, as you do too, my friend. How, how long have you guys known each other? It's a couple of years. We, we met at, um, at the psychic fair. We did and the we first did. one, and we were just across the hallway from each other. So we were absolutely and, and instant friends. You know what? It was it, it was a good connection, and um, I loved knowing that there was a homeopath here. And then we re 